We're now going to join our front and back sections together. You will need a pen and a ruler as well as some double-sided tape. If you have not already made your markings on the back of these two pieces, go ahead and do that now. The first thing you need to do is draw a line that is one inch down from the top. And you also need to draw a line that goes from half inch at the side seam here to three eighths of an inch, three and a half inches down from that side seam. And then you're just going to join that up. And I also just like to continue that three eighths of an inch line just about two inches beyond that mark just to help me get back in the right spot when I am doing my side seam. You're going to repeat that for the other piece as well. Take your double-sided tape and you're going to apply it along this line here, but not past these lines here that mark the seam allowance. Keeping it nice and smooth. Now take the two sides of your bag and you're going to place them right sides together. And we're going to clip around the outside. I like to start at the top edge line those corners up on both sides and then come down to the bottom and line up the center because we have the 3d pocket here there is a little bit of bulk that we just need to tuck out of the way so i just like to fold that in and then line up the center marking on your exterior back with the center marking on your exterior front And then just work your way around lining up the edges and when you get to the corner here where that bulk is just tucking that in and joining up this outside edge of that corner with this outside edge here doing your best to keep it nice and smooth on the inside here. Just smooth that bulk away from the edge. We're now going to sew all the way around the outside of the bag, starting at the top here with a half inch seam allowance and then following the taper line that we drew to come to a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, which we will then continue all the way around the bottom of the bag, around those curves, back up to where we've drawn our line again and then taper back out to half an inch at the top again. Using a construction stitch length and back stitching at the beginning, we're just going to sew down that line.
keeping all of our layers together. Taking care in any bulky spots. And then continue all the way around at 3 eighths of an inch. Taking it nice and slow around the corner. Making sure any of your pockets are well out of the way. And coming back up to where we've drawn that line and we will tape it back out to the half inch seam allowance. Back stitching when we get back to the top. We now have our front and back exteriors sewn together. Before I go any further, something that I like to do is just take a peek at these bottom and side seams here. We did a lot of basting when we were constructing our pockets and you just wanna make sure that none of your basting seams can be seen from the outside of the bag after you turn it. So I just like to open up those seams and make sure that I can see everywhere that I have basted so that I know that I'm not gonna have any of those stitch lines seen from the front. So just open that up. You can also check and see if there's any threads that have gotten caught in your side seam there. Pull those back through. Check and see how your pockets look. Check for any puckers. And if you're happy, then we can continue on. If you're happy with how all of that looks, we can trim our seam allowance here and tidy up any threads. You're going to trim back the seam allowance around the entire sides, except for the top two inches of the bag. And for your corners, if you like, you can use pinking shears just to help those turn out nicely. It's a little tricky to cut through all of the layers though. Peel your double-sided tape back from just next to the seam line and then open out that side seam and press that down flat. I'm going to take another piece of double-sided tape and we're just going to pop it over that seam there. Now we're going to take the entire length of the double-sided tape off. We're going to fold this edge here down to meet up with the line that we drew earlier. Just folding over that top edge. Doing our best to fold it straight over without any wrinkles or any skews. Once you're happy with that, you can take your seam roller or a mallet and just press that down and flatten those seams a little bit. These little bits at the side here you can also use key fob pliers to just squeeze those a little flatter. If you happen to have a pair of these lying around, they're very handy for just squeezing seams, nice and flat. Now we're going to turn the bag out the right way. Now we've got that turned out, you can just press these edges down again. If you are not adding the center component to your bag, then what you will do here is grab your double-sided tape again, and you will put a line across this inside part here where we have folded down the top edge, and you will then press that together to make that top of the bag 
nice and flat and smooth. Then you will sew along this upper edge at a top stitching width of about 1 8 of an inch or perhaps a little bit deeper closer to 3 16 of an inch for the top edge and close up your bag. After that is sewn that's going to look like this with the top edge fully opposed and closed up. You can also press those side seams there before you stitch to help with some of that bulk. If you are not closing up and you're continuing on to do your center section then let's grab our bundle number four. Take your bundle number four pattern pieces as well as your last magnetic snap set and your two pieces of stabilizer. First, check that you have your centers marked on all four pieces as well as a line drawn one inch down from the top and your snap markings drawn on both of those exterior, on both of those center pocket top pieces. Grab one of your center lining pieces and you're going to line the center up with the lower edge of this top piece. You'll know it's the lower edge because the snap marking is further away and it has the line there. I'm just going to line up that edge and clip it together and repeat for the other piece as well. Putting the center pocket upper section right side down on the center pocket, lower lining section. We're now going to go over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew straight along this edge at 3 8 of an inch on both pieces. Then we're going to fold that open, fold our seam allowance down under the lining piece and top stitch along here. The same as I've said before, if you need to reduce your bulk, after we have sewn it, you can open that seam allowance up and top stitch on either side of that stitching line. Back stitching at the beginning and the end and using our shorter stitch length, we're going to sew straight down this side and the second piece. I'm now going to open that out I'm folding that seam allowance underneath the lining, like so. I'm going to press along here, and then I will top stitch. If you have the extra bulk, then this is where you would open out that seam allowance and press it on both sides, and you can top stitch on either side of that seam to keep that bulk to a minimum in your side seam there. I've pressed that to create a nice edge there, and I'm now going to top stitch along that fold using my longer stitch length and starting my stitches in the side seam allowance so that I can back stitch. I'm continuing straight along that fold there. And repeat on the second piece. We're now going to install our last snap pair. These sides are identical so it doesn't matter which one goes on which side. Grab your double-sided tape and we're just going to apply it along the top here, but keeping it out of what will be the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance on either side. I'll take your two pieces and again, I like to snap my magnets together just to make sure that they line up. Line up my centers and then go around and line up all of the landmarks. So where the fold is here, the corner, the centers at the bottom, and the other corner, all the way around. I 
Now we're going to sew around this entire edge at 3 8 of an inch using the shorter stitch length and this time starting at 3 8 of an inch and the same distance all the way around, the same seam allowance all the way around, unlike the exterior where we tapered it. Back stitching. And just continuing all the way around. This is also a good time to check if your bobbin has enough thread, I guess before you start would be a good time to check. I just had to refill mine, taking it nice and slow as you get over that bump where all of those layers meet up. And again, taking care at this bulk, if you need your hump jumper to get over to make sure you don't skip any stitches. Reinforce if you like. Coming back up to the top and back stitching once again. Before we fold this top edge down or trim any of these seam allowances, we need to check to make sure that this fits inside of our exterior. So keeping this right wrong side out and the bag is right side out, we're just going to pop it inside and make sure that we are happy with the fit. So you can just loosely clip it. Now this is not the way that it is going to line up on the finished bag, but it just gives you an idea of how it's going to fit in case you need to adjust your seam allowance to get a nice fit inside of your exterior. So just lining up those edges there And then we're just going to tuck that in a little more. It's got a little extra because it's not folded over, but it's just the single layer of the lining. And then you can see that that fits. Oh, the magnets snap together. That is a good fit inside. It's nice and smooth. It's going to sew together really well when it comes time to do our drop-in lining. So I'm happy with that. If you find that your lining piece is too big, you can take a slightly greater seam allowance around here. If you find that it is too small, then you can unpick your stitches here and you can just adjust it just here and taper it so that it will fit nicely inside of that exterior section. So now I can trim my seam allowances and the same as we did for the exterior, leave the top two inches at their full width and then just snip in and we're just going to trim that down to about a quarter of an inch. Now grabbing your double-sided tape, pop a little bit just in that seam allowance there. And we're just going to fold that open. And then we put a little bit of double-sided tape over that seam allowance there. And then just like we did for the exterior section, we'll fold the upper edge down to meet that line there. But we won't be turning this out. This is already the correct way for this interior, this center pocket here. And then just folding that in to that line. And then you can flatten those seams with a mallet, with your key fob pliers, seam roller, just to get the bulky bits to lay flat so we'll be ready to drop in that lining. We're now going to place double-sided tape along this piece, the top edge, outside of the top stitching seam allowance. So at least 3 16 of an inch below that upper folded edge. We're now going to pop this inside our exterior. 
you could decide which side of your snap you want to have face forward. I like to have my socket snap at the back of the bag, but that's up to you. Just slide that entire lining piece inside. Leaving that double-sided tape with the backing on for now. We're going to line up our side seams here. And I'm going to clip around the top edge to make sure that I am happy with the fit. You don't have to clip the whole way around. It's just to be sure that the fit is good before we peel off the other side of tape. So you can just put clips every few inches and that will show you how your fit is. And it should be good at this stage. That's why we did the earlier fit test. You can see that that is inside. That's good. That's going to fit together nicely. Make sure that you are happy with the evenness of the lining compared to the exterior. They should sit nice and flush together. And then you can peel off your double-sided tape and press those two layers together. Doing one side at a time. Remove those clips. Peel back the double-sided tape. And then just pressing those layers together. Check it from both sides. When you're happy with one side, flip it over and do the other side. And then once that is all stuck together with the tape, just do a final check to be sure that you're happy with how your seams are lining up and how it's all fitting together. And then we are going to go and top stitch around this opening using a long stitch length, not back stitching. At least one eighth of an inch, you can do slightly greater. And we will be almost finished. For top stitching, first check that you have enough thread in your bobbin. It is upsetting to run out of bobbin thread when you're in the middle of top stitching. If you have a walking foot and your machine struggles with layers, that may be a wise choice for you. I'm going to use my Teflon foot and I also have my hump jumper here in case I need it to get over some of that bulk at the side seams. I have taken that part of the bed off so that I can slide the bag around. If you have a flatbed machine, you can turn your bag back inside out and that may make it easier for you to sew around the outside of your bag. But if you're doing it like this, then the feed dogs can help feed through the exterior and keep those layers together nicely as well. Not back stitching, using a long stitching length, a long stitch length. I am sewing at one eighth of an inch and I'm starting at the back of the bag, and that is where I will finish off my top stitch. I'm just going to take it nice and slowly. Now, as I come up on this quite bulky area here, I'm going to grab my hump jumper, and I'm just going to pop it underneath here to support my presser foot as it gets over that bulk. Take it nice and slowly. And bring it back around as it comes down off the front. Now 
and then keep sewing along the front exterior of the bag. Coming up to this next bulky area here, put my hump jumper under again and just try to smooth that out a little bit where that seam allowance is there. I'm going to hand crank it. nearly there. I'm going to pull this thread through here. Watch out for your magnetic snap as you're coming around that doesn't catch on your machine bed. And then lining up that last stitch as close to you can where you started. machine. And just pull those threads through. We can tie them off and then I'll just use my needle to tuck them back in to the lining. So you can just knot your threads and then I've got my needle tucked in through my stitch line and back out through the fold and then I will put the threads through the eye of the needle there, and then you can just pull that through, and then folding open that seam allowance just a little, you can then snip those threads, and then that will be hidden inside of your seam allowance. The last thing that we need to do is attach a crossbody strap to our bag. We can do that by either connecting D-rings to the exterior or we can place grommets and put our swivels through the grommet holes. If you are making the version that has the opening in the middle, you will place four grommets, two on each side, and you will connect those grommets with a large O-ring with an opening here so that it can cross the opening of the bag and you will still be able to get your swivel hook on. If you have made the version of the bag that has the closed top, then you would place two grommets, one on each side, high enough up that your swivel would just be able to hook straight through that grommet. Alternatively, you can use two more pairs of the strap ends to make strap connectors and using a D-ring, you can rivet that strap connector to either side of your bag and then attach your crossbody strap that way. I'm going to show you both options today. I'm going to do the D-ring option on the version of the Kailona that does not have the center pocket and I'm going to do the grommets on this version. For the rivet version, you will need two more pairs of strap connectors that have been sewn the same way as we did for the ones at the end of our crossbody strap. And you will need two D-rings. You can use three quarters of an inch. These are seven eighths of an inch and they still are a good fit, but three quarters will work well with the strap connectors this size. What you then need to do is mark the placement where your rivets are going to go. I am using four rivets on each connector. You can use two. Mark those positions and then you will punch holes through your strap connectors, as you can see here. What I then like to do is transfer those markings over to my bag. So I'm going to place my strap connector in the correct position at the end of my bag and I'm going to hold that in place with a clip. I'm then going to take a pen and I'm just going to mark where each of those points are. And then I'm going to take my hole punch and I'm going to punch those holes through all of the layers. Then take your strap connector piece and you're just going to poke the rivets through those holes. Let me 
making sure that your D-ring is on. Flip it over. You can use a bit of double-sided tape to keep things in position, but the rivets are going to hold it there, so it's really not necessary. Poke those through. Then I'm going to pop those caps on. Then make sure that you are happy with your placement. And then before I set those rivets, I'm just going to make the holes on the other side. You can do this one side at a time as well. Just to be sure that you're getting your placement correct. And you can also use an awl to mark those holes. It may be a little easier to see than the pen, depending on your material of choice. I'm going to punch those other holes. And then putting these ones through on this side. Now I'm just going to go and set those rivets and that will secure those D-ring connectors. So those rivets are set now. Make sure when you are setting your rivets that you are feeling two clicks so that you know that they are fully secure. Those D-rings are not going anywhere. And then you can just attach your crossbody strap. And that version is done. I'm now going to show you the grommet method. I like to look at the front of my bag and just using the grommet, have an idea of where I would like those holes to be. I am using smaller grommets. These are just half inch ones. So I'm going to place them a little higher up than the pattern calls for, but I do have nice big O-rings that will be able to bridge that opening there. So I'm just going to have a look and see where looks good. And then I'm just going to press that grommet onto my vinyl there to make a mark. And then I'm going to measure what I have here. It's a little hard to see. I'm going to mark it again and then I'm going to draw it in. I now want to copy the same position into the other four grommet locations. So this is three eighths of an inch down from the top and half an inch from the edge. So I'm going to copy that over to this side. So half an inch from here and three eighths down. So if I put that grommet right there, that should be about the same. Half an inch and three eighths. That's pretty good. Just going to mark that again in the same spot. And then measure it once more to be sure. And that is three eighths down, half an inch in. So I'm going to draw another mark there. And then flipping it over. Doing the same thing again, using my ruler to measure half an inch in, 
three quarters of an inch down, take my grommet, just press it at the corner of my ruler there. Make an indent, which I can then measure. I'm just gonna come over just a teeny tiny bit. Check it again. Down a tiny bit. Just press that on. Okay. Then I'm just going to draw in that circle again. One more to do the same way with my ruler, half an inch in, three eighths down. Your position may be completely different to mine. Press that there, measuring. Three eighths, half an inch, just over ever so slightly. We are about to cut a hole in our finished bag, so it pays to be certain of where you are placing your grommet. and just draw that last circle in. Now you can cut that with a pair of very sharp scissors and just cutting around where we've just drawn that circle. I have a grommet cutting die that I will use. So I'm going to go and cut those holes just punching through all of those layers there. Now that I have punched four holes in my bag exterior, I'm going to go and set these grommets, one in each hole. I've now got my four grommets set. I'm going to take my O-rings. I'm going to use those to join those two grommets on each side. And then I will connect my crossbody strap to those O-rings. And there you have it. That is the completed Kylona crossbody from N Designs. I hope that you have found that helpful. If you have any questions or need anything clarified, you can uh, pop a comment below or you can ask in the N Designs Facebook group where you can get any assistance that you need making your own crossbody bag using any of the variations that are included in the pattern. Thanks everyone.